and it's a combination of all day long before school and after school. Uh, the city has, uh, has put forward a report that they want to transition out of the uh, daycare uh, space that they're in right now. Well, if they do, then we're looking at approximately 200 kids who are going to need some additional care. That's going to put us up to 1,300 then. So we've reached out to a number of the different daycare providers to find out what barriers are they facing to expand their businesses, how can we open things up for them and make it easier for them to pick up some of that slack to expand their programs so that we don't have 1,100 kids on the wait list. We have more spots available than what we actually have for kids. Do you think that's also a function as Peterborough turns the corner on its own economy, more and more young people are going to work, they're going to be commuters, they really need that reliable daycare uh, because that is where Peterborough's kind of going and so that capacity in the short term is caught uh, short. It is and you, you find uh, well, this is, it's not a new phenomenon, but uh, most families now are, are two income families. So that puts more pressure on the system because you don't have someone staying at home raising their children. You have to get them into some kind of a daycare program while you go off to work. Uh, those pressures are, are much more on us now and we need to find a way to facilitate that, to fill in the, the gaps. The government doesn't have a daycare that we run, but we have the ability to reduce some regulations, make things a little bit easier so that those who are in that daycare industry have the ability to expand, have the ability to, to hire the people that they need to and provide the care that they need. Because one of the projections of the 407 connection is that there will be more commuters. More commuters have jobs, which means there's kids at home which need some yep. kind of solution. So it's, uh, it's going to exacerbate with time.